Greetings everyone! This is a quick promo before the video begins. If you're new to the channel and you didn't know it yet, I am actually an author in addition to being a YouTuber, and I have two books that you can get on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1 and The Occult Mafia. The first is sort of a bizarre, absurdist kaiju anime mashup, and the other is a horror noir story with a hint of a western thrown in there. They're both set in the same universe, and at this point have received mostly positive reviews, so you might want to check them out. I've provided Amazon links for both of them down in the description. They're both available in either paperback or Amazon Kindle, and Operation Red Dragon is also available in audiobook form. So if either of these strike your fancy and you want to support a struggling artist, feel free to go down and check out either one or both of them. Alright, the shameless self-promotion is out of the way, we can get on with the video. Thank you all for your support. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I am one of the few people who admits to liking the DCEU films. That's not something many movie buffs or superhero fans would openly admit to, Unless, of course, it's Wonder Woman. Now, even I think that Wonder Woman is a cut above the other films, though why it gets a pass when it shares so many elements with the Zack Snyder movies tells me there's a double standard at play among the critics. It's got the same color palette, the same use of slow motion, the same serious tone, and a very high body count, which, by the way, Diana sheds no tears over despite believing all of the soldiers she's slaughtering have been brainwashed and are thus not evil by nature, but apparently that stuff is only bad when Snyder does it because reasons. Omni, it's not worth going down that rabbit hole today. You can't rationalize irrational hatred. I think there's another matter that needs addressing. And what, pray tell, might that be? How people don't understand the movie's ending. Commentators who otherwise seem to get everything else in the movie also say it's completely derailed by the finale because Ares turns out to be real. They say that this revelation, even with the twist that he wasn't Ludendorff, kills the movie's thematic line by substituting Diana's internal conflict for an external one. Whereas before, she was blinded by her own naive perception and had to accept the complexities of human nature, suddenly she's given an enemy to fight and pin all the evils of the world on. The message thus gets upended just so there can be a big CGI fight at the end. People actually believe that? Enough that it warrants a response, I think. You're right, Snazzy. This does need addressing. My reptilian compadre summed up the issue nicely, and it really does surprise me how many people voice this perception of the film. How they arrived at this conclusion, I honestly don't know, because the true nature of the ending is obvious to me. Really obvious. So obvious that I genuinely cannot fathom how anyone could miss it. Since a lot of people have, though, it looks like I have to step in and set everyone back on the right track. So you know how Wonder Woman plays out, I'm sure. Diana has convinced herself of two things. First, the Great War is being caused by Ares, the god of war, and second, General Ludendorff, a real historical figure by the way, is Ares in disguise. After traveling the battlefields of Europe and witnessing the horrors of war firsthand, she confronts Ludendorff at his airfield, engages in combat, and successfully kills him. Quick aside, the real General Ludendorff survived the war and became a vocal proponent of the stabbed-in-the-back theory, which said that Germany lost the Great War because of a subversive Jewish conspiracy. That makes the way he dies in this film a bit of a historical in-joke. See, Ludendorff? You weren't stabbed in the back by the Jews. You were stabbed in the front by a Greek. That's totally different. Anyway, Diana believes that she's killed Ares and ended the war, but as she looks around, she sees that nothing has changed. Diana has no clue what to do now, and this prompts Steve Trevor to deliver his big speech about how things are more complicated than that. There is no devil to pin everything on, and the world cannot be saved by killing one villain. Diana, still dumbfounded that this whole trip has been for nothing, doesn't accept this explanation right away, instead thinking that Ares' influence is still in effect and is so powerful that even the people she trusts are subject to it. Steve Trevor leaves so he can complete his mission, but for the first time, Diana is stuck. And then God shows up. Or rather, Ares does. It turns out he is actually Sir Patrick Morgan, the British commander who enabled her journey and was attempting to further the armistice. So this moment is where people say the movie falls apart, and the internal conflict is substituted for an external conflict. 
You can't say there's no single villain to pin all of the evils of the world on, then turn around and reveal that villain you can pin all the evils of the world on is actually real. I, however, disagree with that wholeheartedly. I don't see an external conflict replacing an internal conflict, but rather I see the internal conflict continuing to be explored in an external way. But to understand how that works, we first need to understand Ares. To the movie's credit, it does state outright that Ares isn't directly responsible for anything that's happened. He allows mankind access to new methods of death and destruction, but that's where his influence ends. Whenever humans use these weapons to kill each other, it's a choice made by those humans and them alone. Heck, Ares has placed himself among humanity as an advocate of peace to create the illusion that he has the moral high ground. Then again, most people feel like this is a flimsy attempt to dismiss his impact on real-world events. Now here is the important question that needs to be asked, and once answered, it may change your entire view of the movie. That question is, what is Ares' goal? What is he trying to gain by doing all of this? Is his goal to wage war for the sake of waging war? That would be most people's first guess, and understandably so. Ares is the god of war, after all. Moreover, the film is set during World War I, a conflict that seemed to happen simply because the leaders of Europe wanted it to. If ever a war was fought simply for the sake of fighting, it would be the Great War. Yet that doesn't seem to be Ares' goal in the film. Surely there must be a better way to bring about conflict than what we see him doing, so war for its own sake doesn't feel like his main objective. Is his goal perhaps to wipe out the human race? Ares actively hates mankind in this movie, and their extinction is certainly something he wants. Then again, if that's his primary objective, he's going about it very inefficiently. Just dropping plans for weapons into people's laps and leaving them to make up their own minds doesn't feel like a surefire method of mass extermination. Not to mention, the movie is set in 1918, when the Great War is winding down anyway because everyone has grown fatigued by the senselessness of it all. I do believe that long-term Ares does want mankind wiped out, but I don't think that's his immediate goal, or at least it's not the full extent of his goal. So what's left? If Ares doesn't want any of those things, what does he want? What Ares wants is vindication. According to the backstory, Ares was the only god in the whole Greek pantheon who hated humanity. He saw them as barbaric animals who would ruin the earth unless they were destroyed. When he tried convincing the other gods that he was right and they disagreed, he waged war against them because peaceful conflict resolution isn't in your skill set when your title is the god of war. Ares kills all of the other gods until only he and Zeus are left, and they essentially fight to a draw. Ares is cast down to Earth powerless, though still immortal, and Zeus uses the last of his power to isolate Themyscira and Sire Diana, after which he presumably dies as well. Now, you could argue that Ares won the argument by way of being the last god standing. With all the other gods dead, there's no one left to tell him he's wrong. But then again, there's no one left to tell him he's right, either. What good is victory when there are no spoils to claim? Then again, Ares knows that Diana exists. She's a daughter of Zeus, which makes her a demigod, and thus the closest thing there is left to being his equal. He cannot reach her directly, of course, but he can prepare for her arrival. So he bides his time, influencing history from the shadows until the war to end all wars comes about, and as fate would have it, that's when Diana leaves the shelter of Themyscira and enters the world of man. And the timing could not be better. Seeing how childish her perceptions are, he enables her quest to find Ares, knowing that she will see the horrors of this senseless conflict with her own eyes, and her beliefs will be challenged and chipped away little by little. Finally, she reaches the point of killing Ludendorff, whom she is convinced is Ares, only to see nothing change. It is in that precise moment, when she is confused and struggling against her own doubt, that Ares appears and reveals all to her. Swiftly and efficiently, Ares finishes shattering Diana's bubble, to which she responds the same way he did in days of old. She responds with violence because she has no counter-argument, but she still desperately wants to hang on to her beliefs. This changes when Steve Trevor makes his sacrificial move, destroying the bomber with the poison gas and himself along with it. 
At this moment, Diana loses all faith in mankind, for the only truly good man she knew has died, and he never would have had to if not for the war. You mean if not for the people who wage war? Diana turns her attention from Ares to the soldiers in that moment, and listen to how Ares responds. Yes, Diana, finally, you see. You hear that? He's urging her on. He's pleased with what she's doing. At this point, Ares is winning. Diana is lashing out at humanity because her beliefs are now dust, just as he planned. Then she reaches the pivotal moment in which she is confronted with the chance to kill Dr. Poison. Besides Ludendorff, Dr. Poison is arguably the most evil person in the whole film. She takes sadistic glee in her wicked inventions and feels no remorse for the harm she causes, whether it be to innocent civilians or her test subjects. Much like the Joker, one would be very hard pressed to argue why she should not be executed. Yet Diana hesitates and ultimately spares this woman. And it's not because of a double standard. At least, in-universe it's not. Diana has already killed one person who fit the definition of evil, and it solved nothing. All it did was set her on a path towards a darkness she had never known before, and if she gave in and did it again, she would ultimately be succumbing to Ares' will. The god of war would get his vindication, have his ally, and be victorious. Then she remembers Steve Trevor's parting words to her, and everything suddenly comes into focus. She was wrong to think that all humans are good, but Ares is wrong to think all humans are evil. Sure, there are good people and bad people, but none of them speak for the whole. Mankind as a race has unlimited potential, and sure, Ares has been exploiting that for evil, but that's all he's ever seen in them. What mankind needs is a good influence, like Diana. Thus, she spares Dr. Poison, not because she is worth sparing, but because killing her will not lead to anything positive. With that decision made, her internal conflict is resolved. But I know what you're all going to say. If that's true, how come Diana still ends World War I by killing Ares? Well, that's the thing. She doesn't. Remember, the movie takes place when the war is nearly over anyway, so it was going to end no matter what. This shot of Allied and German soldiers coming together after Ares' death may seem like the film is saying they were under his influence, but a basic knowledge of history puts this in context. Soldiers may have gone off to fight in the trenches thinking of glory and valor, but those notions were quickly dispelled by the harsh reality of their situations. The harsh conditions and multiple stalemates made even the staunchest of nationalists on all sides ask what the point was. In fact, it was not all that uncommon for enemy soldiers to become pen pals and strike up friendships on the battlefield. The first year of the war, in fact, was when the Christmas Truce occurred, initiated by the Germans, who were considered the de facto bad guys by everyone else. By 1918, there were very few people left who actually wanted to fight. So if those same people had just witnessed a literal battle of the gods and survived to see the dawn, this reaction seems like a natural one to me. When Diana kills Ares, she's not doing it to end the war. Rather, it's a symbolic act. Ares is just as naive as Diana had been, but in a different way, and he will not change. Diana does remove his influence over the world by killing him, but she also rejects his influence over her at the same time. Her internal conflict is thus resolved, though it requires external actions to be complete. Henceforth, Wonder Woman's mission will not be to save the world from nebulous evil, but to be a protector who intervenes when needed and guides mankind towards the light. I got pretty much all of that after my first viewing of the film, and I still cannot fathom how so many people can miss that and think the ending is just mindless CGI spectacle. At the risk of sounding condescending, I have to ask, how? How can so many analytical minds look at this movie and not get how the ending works? Are big explosions and CGI really that distracting? Well, whatever the case, I hope that this little dissertation cleared things up. As far as I'm concerned, the ending of Wonder Woman doesn't need fixing because it was never broken in the first place. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off.
I wonder. Well, I'll be darned. It does work. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe, then go down to the description to find links to follow us on DeviantArt, Patreon, and Twitter. While you're there, you'll also find the Amazon links for the original novels Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, and The Occult Mafia. Two books I think you'll really enjoy. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.